Thanks, Dennis, for keeping time. Uh, we are going to start right now. Um, today, I think it's a financial wellness dialogue. We right now. Um, today, I think. Great. Um, I needed to do some housekeeping. So today at Financial Wellness Dialogue, it's all about conversations about running a business, the key mistakes that we need to avoid when running a business. So the whole of this month is all about running businesses. If you think, if you've been following us since the beginning of the year, we have had thematic months. So last month was all about investment and the various options that one can invest in. Last week, we, it, we looked at uh, investing in the circle. But uh, this month, we shall be having a couple of people coming to the show, discussing about the key things that you need to learn as you start your business, or even as you run your business, what are the key things that you need to be aware of? And um, since it was a long weekend, uh, we just decided, let me just go with it, set the stage as, um, as we wait to get a, a lineup of a couple of people who, who are going to take, uh, take us through various matters. So we shall have people talking about some of the things like maybe common sense when running a business, something like uh, marketing when running a business, uh, the key marketing concepts in running a business, because those are the key pillars. And today, all our conversation will be based on the key pillars that we need to get right as we run our business. So we shall be thinking about what must I get right or what should I be aware of and how, what is the best way for me to get it all right. So remember at the end of the day, when you're looking at running a business, the conversation is you have to really want the business to succeed so much that you must run a business in things that you care for. So if you're running a business in something that you really do not care for, that's when you will see a lot of, maybe fly, fly, uh, you may not be able to move the agenda because things will get tough and you better be left with something that you care. So if, for example, you care about mankind, it is good to see what is the business that you will do that will actually touch on those bases. So I'll just go with maybe a start off with a quote by Elon Musk, which says, if something is important enough, even if the odds are against you, you should still do it. So remember at the end of the day, the foundation in which you form your business, it has to be something that you care and you'll be, if you're woken up in the middle of the night, you'll be able to run with it at any one time. And there's a lot of statistics that have been put out there in terms of the businesses and how often businesses fail. And uh, just really looking at 20% uh, of the new businesses fail during the first three years of being open. And about 45% of, of, of businesses actually fail in the first five years, 65% of them fail in the 10 years and only about 25% get to see their 15th anniversary. So there are a couple of reasons why maybe people do not, you're not able to move that fast to the 15th anniversary. And part of it is really even founders fatigue, even something as simple as, you know, what really something that you really care for so much, there comes a time when you are no longer able to push for it. So those are some of the key things when it comes to uh, running a business. Yes, some of them could fail, but at the same time, some of them would evolve. So something, let's say, for example, uh, people who are doing maybe the code, uh, something like Kodak, they, they out, things change so much such that they could not continue being in business. So if, if for example, you are running such a business, as long as you are able to move with it or be able to grow and become so big such that innovation really surrounds you, it might not be easy for you to, um, to grow. So when I'm looking at businesses, I will look at it in four key, uh, four key pillars or the four things that one needs to consider so that you make sure that your business goes uh, to the long term. The starting point is people. And when I look at people, I'm looking at the employees in the organization. The, and, and the number one employee is really you as the individual. You as an individual, you have to make sure that you're taking care of the person that is you so that you are able to motivate everybody else. Remember, you as a leader or the owner, you're going to, uh, you, power will emanate from you. So if you're not able to motivate people or being able to push people, then it becomes a big issue. So as an, as an entrepreneur, you are really the life, the life you're, you're the life of the business. So you have to be able to really, not really be the smartest, but be able to rally people around the goal, be able to sell the goal to people so that they can actually come and rally around it. 
if you are a volatile person or you're not able maybe to bring people around your, your, your what you really think uh, matters, it is going to be a significant challenge because people will not be able to uh, to come and uh, and move move forward with, uh, with that. Then as you as you start off um, in businesses, I, you can actually be a single entrepreneur or someone who's starting alone, or you can actually be co-founders. So when you think about the co-founders, one of the things that you need to make sure is you are bringing people who bring in different skill sets and different uh, strengths within the organization. The reason that's why it's important, it is always good to make sure that whatever you are lacking in, someone else has the strength to help you push along. If you're not able to get that the people in form of co-founders, and uh, or you are not able to get co-founders that you can work with together well, then make sure that you are hiring the right people. You already know what are the key things that are required. So maybe the marketing person, maybe you're the strong strategic person, but when it comes to actual execution, maybe you, you are not that strong. So when you look at the right people or the people that you're bringing into the team, it ha you have to make sure that it's people who are bringing complementary skills. So being able to bring in the right people and the way to bring in the right people is making sure that they're aligned and you're also being able to communicate to them. And also when people come in and realize that that is not the right place they want to be, letting people go is also important so that, uh, so that you can be able to have the right people around what you need to do. So people is the most important thing and the, and of it all is actually being able to be as a founder, being able to have the right people. In terms of uh, being, being able to correct, being able to give guidance, but at the end of the day, are you able also to take feedback and letting people be? Remember, you uh, like Steve Jobs said, you you should, there's no point of hiring uh, good intelligent people and telling them how to do. It is always good also to listen to people because it is in listening to them that they are able to also give guidance in terms of where the organization should go. The other key thing is you, we, I, I think one of the questions I've always gotten asked is what business should I get in? At the, remember at the end of the day, you should start a business that is, um, that is speaking to a certain need. So the, the product or the customer that you are, you are trying to serve, you should actually make sure that the, the need really exists. So actually make sure that you're adding, a, you're adding value. And the way you add value is either you see a gap and in that gap, you ask yourself, am I better suited to, uh, to solve this gap? If you do not have the most um, easiest, uh, less costly or more valuable uh, solution, you may not be the right person to offer that solution. So make sure that the product that you're coming in, in uh, you're, putting, you're bringing into the market actually is what people are looking for. Then as you even do that, ask yourself, is this scalable? So asking yourself that if this product, finally, maybe it's good, but the number of people who would like to use this are not as many. So what do you do? So you need to make sure that you're looking at a product that is scalable and can be replicated because, so that you can actually be able even as much as possible to automate. And one of the challenges that we face as entrepreneurs is that we spend so much time on a product such that we are, are emotionally vested in it up to the point where when it's not working, it becomes very difficult for us to let go. So it is always good to make sure that you're coming up with a product, yes, test it in the market, and there is a clear process of product development, ideation, all the way to uh, commercialization, and you need to follow that so that you could be failing, you fail fast, and so that you're not so much invested in the product that you're coming up with. Involve the customer as you come up with the product, because if the product is really good to you and the client is not willing to pay for it, then you need to reinvent yourself and ask yourself what really would, would be wrong or what can you change. So always making sure that you're looking at what can you change or what uh, can you learn from other people who have been ahead of you is important. The other thing is, remember, as you start the business today, you are the most, you are the central person in that business, but things change. So you should, you should put in place processes that outlive you. You should look at yourself at some point, maybe exiting the stage and how will the world look like when you exit the stage. So creating clear processes and systems that people can come and replicate and move with, uh, move with them is important. So it is very important that you start with the end in mind. When you shall be doing fundraising or looking at, uh, uh, at getting uh, other people to come into the business, those are the things that they are going to look at. 
And the starting point is really even in terms of how do you, how, how have you registered your business and what did you take a certain format? Are you fully compliant with the basic things? So you might not be the person who is like, uh, who has to do the, the compliances and all that, but you need to make sure that they are done. So make sure that you have, you have your KRA in place, have your registration in place. If you are starting a business with more, uh, more than one person, is it a limited liability company? Is it a limited liability partnership? And why is that so? Or are you just registering it in the form of a, proprietor, a solo proprietorship? And why is that? And what are the taxation implications that comes with that? So it is good to make sure that you are moving with all this and you're doing it uh, rightly. So processes and systems, you need to start with that in mind today because at the end of the day, you are uh, Clearing or cleaning up the mess much later might be a little bit different, difficult. Then the other thing is sales and marketing. And I, uh, we shall get someone who will talk to us about sales and marketing at a later uh, webinar. And at the end of the day, you have to you'll create the product, but you have to make sure that the clients know that the product exists and that they can be able and how they are going to engage with the product. So sales and marketing is... Uh, of paramount importance. And lately with the, with the a lot of digitization and social media, you can actually market on a much, much cheaper way compared to what people would do uh, earlier on, whereby you had to do the newspapers and the billboards. Now you can actually have a small budget and you can be able to actually create a brand around you. So there's a lot of books and a lot of uh, trainings around sales, marketing, brand creation. And if you're going to run a business, it is good to make sure that you're actually creating a brand. And brand, uh, brand creation comes from different, uh, different things. Maybe just a simple interaction with your clients uh, really helps us uh, uh, helps determine what you stand for. So it is good to make sure that you're actually creating a brand that is consistent with what you want uh, you, you, you want known for, to be known for. Then after that, you have not to market and you have to make sure that you're using the right channels. Then the final one or the final pillar is actually funding and finances. At the end of the day, you will not be able to run a business if you do not have the right funding. And the reason I say the right funding it's because businesses are, the way you fund your business basically can be, it's broadly uh, in two broad categories. So you have uh, debt, uh, debt funding and you have equity funding. Being able to know when to get what kind of funding at each point matters. So if you look at the life cycle of their business, when, you, when you're coming in as a startup, most of the time it's good to have equity in the business and anyway, you may not be able to get debt funding into the business. So as you grow, then you can be able to attract different kinds of funding. So getting the right funding is important and at the right time. Remember you're growing. Do not wait until when you're completely um, in strain or dire need of capital for you to go fundraising. You need to make sure that you are planning ahead and are able to get your funding on time. So those are the key for, uh, those are the five pillars as I see them when it comes to running a business. And the key challenges will really come from those particular um, four pillars. And when you're thinking about, uh, about running a successful business, those are the things that you need to think about. How am I going to get my people on board? How am I going to get my customers? Uh, uh, well, what is the right kind of customer I'm looking for? And in the, looking at the right kind of customer, the questions come, what is my business model? How am I going to make money? Because remember, you have to make money, but you have also to collect the funds uh, or the cash back to your business. How am I going to make sure that the clients know that I exist? And, well, um, and how, so how am I going to do carry out my marketing? What are the, my processes that I'm going to put in place? And am I going to have all these processes in-house or are some of the things that I'm going to outsource? And if I'm going to outsource, who am I outsourcing to? And then finally, how am I going to fund this business? So as you start, you'll start with your capital, but with time, you need to make sure that you're able to uh, bring in uh, that particular capital that will help you grow to the next levels. So if those are the four or the five foundations or key pillars that we need to look out for, what are some of the key mistakes that we need generally to be aware of? One of them is failing to start and undertaking the experiment. Remember at the end of the day, we want to start a business, but we're always like, anyway, I'll start tomorrow. Or I'll let me first do the research and you do the research to buy more time and you end up not starting. So failing to start is the biggest uh, challenge. It is always good to engage the process. 
Because once you engage the process, you know what works and what doesn't work. And then shortly, we, you will be able to clear out what, you, what doesn't work and you streamline. But for as long as you're not starting, then you'll never know what doesn't work. The other thing is rushing the process. You want to start today and, and compete with the uh, people who have been in business for five to 10 years. They have learned and paid their price. So at the end of the day, learn from their mistakes, but do not rush the process. Make sure that you're learning, each, uh, you're learning at each stage what needs to be done and be ready to be patient. You have to be patient because that is the only way, uh, that is the only way the world works. You cannot, get, uh, you cannot get a baby and you expect them to go to school maybe in a year's time. So the same thing, the, the business is really like your baby. You have to let them grow and you have to make sure that, because uh, uh, also throwing a lot of resources around, around the business but not be the right thing because processes and, uh, have to be established. Then the other thing is you, we said about the product. Maybe you do not have a, a clear market definition. You really do not, cannot say, this is my client or you have the wrong plant uh, quantification. So for example, maybe you want, to, uh, uh, you want to get into training, but you're really not sure who is your target client. So you end up competing with everybody else. Then the other thing is about rigidity, rigidity and perfection. You actually saw where you wanted to go. So since you saw where you wanted to go, the market could be saying something different. And especially if you have spent a lot of time investing in uh, research or product development, you tend to get really absorbed in the, in the product that you have come up with. So it's always good to make sure that there is room for making mistakes and this is how the mistakes will be corrected. Then uh, failing to plan and uh, putting in the right processes, that is a big problem. And for people who have already gotten or engaged the process of fundraising, these are some of the questions that you will get asked most of the time. Where are your documentation? So when you go to a bank, you are looking at your basic documentations. So if you do not have them all together, it will actually take you really long to be able to get your funding uh, or actually to get your funding. So you need to make sure that you are putting all your documentation together. And that is really what you need to uh, do any fundraising or even to pitch for some of these clients, especially when you're doing uh, big tender documents, you really need those documents, your, your CR12s, your KRA, all those needs to be, uh, to be together. Then the other thing is getting the wrong capital or uh, getting our lack of capital or lack of right capital. So the way I look at right capital, maybe you're at a startup stage, you really need maybe a lot of equity investments. But now if your idea is good, you could end up out of desperation, maybe selling a lot of equity into your, from your business. And that may end up maybe making you not so aligned with the business. So getting the right amount of capital at the right time is important. And then the other thing is, remember you are human and most of the time you'll also feel discouraged. So having the right people around you is important and having the right, maybe just support system. And the support system could run from maybe your family all the way to paid a support system. Like uh, maybe you have to go see a coach, a mentor or something like that. Or you could even just have um, people who are in your, in your business or in business who are really just your cheerleaders. Those things are important. And even your critiques, someone who is just telling you or asking you questions, do you, do you think you're doing the right thing? Some, it is important to get those people all around you because it makes you go back and think again. If someone asks you, uh, Liz, do you think what you're doing is right? Most of the time you wake up and, uh, and uh, question yourself, but always making sure that you're not questioning what you need to do. Uh, you're not questioning where you want to go, but the process maybe, and just saying, maybe can I get, what can I learn? from what uh, this person is asking. And then the other thing is, most of us also fear success. So at, at the end of the day, maybe if you look at your organization, maybe you're going to get eight, eight branches, five branches, you actually fear that success. And in that process, you actually don't put in the time and the effort that is required to scale. So it is always good to make sure that yes, success is important, and it is good. The only thing that you can do is to create systems that are going to support the success. So don't grow too fast. But at the same time, same time, do not not grow. Because if you do not not grow, then you'll have challenges uh, of growth, of not growing. So the big, so when if I, if I was to summarize all this, some of the key, the biggest challenge of most of us as entrepreneurs is actually the fear, uh, we actually fear a lot. And one of the other things is, 
You actually, uh, there's actually an inferiority complex. So the, one of those things you're like, or, or uh, imposter syndrome, you're actually thinking like, okay, fine. I think I should, I can do well, or I know I'm going to do well, but I'm not sure. So the way to do that, the way to get uh, maybe out of that is um, affirming, affirming yourself, but at the same time, joining a lot of business um, support groups is important. Uh, getting people who are running the journey with you it's always good and uh, you should look for those for those places. So just looking at good networking places, I think I only think about something like this, the SMB Founders Association, so you think about BNI, the people actually are going through the same thing. So it is always good to make sure that uh, you, they, you are in such a place because the people will challenge you and as they challenge you, you'll become a better person. The other things always make sure that you're reading, make sure that you are uh, you're improving yourself day in day out, just to make sure that uh, things do not actually stagnate. So basically, in a nutshell, look at your business for the long term. Uh, make sure that you do not over, you have the right people around the business. Make sure you have the right funding and do not delay to get the right funding. Make sure that you're doing your sales and marketing. And if it means outsourcing some of these things to a third party, it's important. But remember, you even, even as the, you outsource, you cannot outsource the responsibility of growing your business. So if you have given someone to do maybe uh, your website or your marketing, please make sure that you're following up because those are they cannot feel the same pain that you have. You have invested the time and the emotions, so you cannot outsource some of those things. So I will pose for questions. And I will, uh, we shall put some of these slides on our website so that you can be able to download and look at them and also read about, uh, about the things that we have covered. If you have any specific questions, please feel free to reach out to us. But in the meantime, I'll also be looking at the questions that we have received uh, online. There are some of the questions that we have received regarding the topic. So, There's a question about how often should a startup adjust its business strategy document. And when you think about um, a business document, there is, what there, there is a business plan and then there's a business strategy, um, a strategy map. When you're starting out, most of the time, I would say that you're putting your strategy on, on, in pencil because you're still really trying out the market. So if it's a product, you're really not 100% sure what is going to work. So, in as much as you, you know where you're going, you should remain flexible. So if, for example, you've started on a specific software that is supposed to do maybe X, Y, Z. Let me talk about an investment product, an investment software. So you want to do an investment software that is going to be able to advise investors or people where they need to invest. So things change. So circumstances are changing. We had not seen uh, Ukraine. We had not seen the oil prices where they are. And so you had done maybe your simulations and this is how you come up with a balanced portfolio. This is how you come up with a risky portfolio and you had documented all that. But when things change, then you need to come back to the drawing board and uh, redo, look at your, uh, at your document. So if you look at your strategy paper, my view is you have to have an annual review of if things are still going as they are supposed to. And if there is any significant change or the, if there is any significant change, then it's also a time for you to relook at your business strategy. So I would not say that uh, how often, I would just say, uh, I would not say um, you should maybe wait for a five year. Big corporates can afford to wait for five year and have a five year strategy. But as you're starting, you remember you're also trying to fix in things together. So get your business model right. Once you get your business model, as you get your business model right, let's say for example, you are starting off by just saying that people will come and pay for my goods on the go, then you realize um, one of the challenges, uh, you can also make money maybe by a subscription model. So quickly you need to look at and read about it and see how else can you incorporate those. So uh, if you need to change, then you need to change uh, as fast as possible, but have the right people asking uh, to, to actually validate the concern that you have. So if you have very, several business ideas, how do you pick one to start with or how do you weigh in which one to do? So yes, remember you're just one person, you're just one person. And since you are one person, you can only do as much. So if you have different business ideas, the first thing is prioritization and how you prioritize is really things that you care for. 
what really do you, first of all, are capable as an individual? And is it a cost that you care for? And how much capital do you have? That is one way to look at this. And then once you've already done that, you, this is what I want to do. Is it profitable? And if it's profitable, and profitability is really just looking about how much money are you going to make versus the risk that you are taking and the opportunity cost. You're really looking at capital versus the opportunity cost and opportunity cost in terms of your time and in terms of your money. So how you prioritize is looking at the things that are going to give you the best return and are going to give you more satisfaction as an entrepreneur. So always prioritizing what really matters to you and that has a better return. And when you're starting a business, do not start a business that you do not understand because that is the surest way to lose money. So always make sure that you either have the time to spend uh, understanding the business or you get partners who are able to help you understand that kind of business. So what is the best way to, of raising capital for a new business? So when you're starting off, uh, there are a lot of moving parts. And you might not be able to, to manage um, the business plus the partners that come with it. So when you're starting off a business, it is good to start off with your capital and then go to your, um, your, your networks before you go to maybe fundraising formally, formal fundraising, because if you go for formal fundraising, that also comes with its own key challenges and also the requirements are more. So if, for example, you wanted to get money from a venture capital uh, firm, they, for them, they would like to see that you have validated your process, you have validated your concept. So they'll come in for a, to a business that is maybe loss making, yes, but the, the, there's a demand for this demand for their product. There are angel investors who come in, but also again, they come with their own demands. So it is good to know where to go for funding. There are, there are various angel investors networks that you can look out for and uh, they can help you invest. I think you can do crowdfunding, though in Kenya it's not been done. Uh, there, there's really not much that is happening on that front. Uh, but I think there is one company called Pezesha who that has been able to, uh, to create a crowdfunding platform. But even for you to go fundraise there, you have to have a business that is already viable. So if it's an idea, most probably you will have to fund it yourself for people around you. But if it is gained traction, you can be able to get it a bank funding or you can actually be able to get that party funding elsewhere. Then uh, please continue sending questions. We uh, will be happy to take what we can. What we can't, we shall pack it and just have the right people come to uh, talk about it. Um, interested to learn more on scaling up a business, interested to learn more about scaling up a business. So when you think about scaling a business, so I'm starting with this one particular branch. How do I grow? Again, we go back to the five key uh, pillars that you need to make sure that they are, they are intact as you grow your business. The starting point, again, make sure that you have the right people, make sure that the product has a market and um, can be replicated. Make sure that you are doing your sales and marketing, you have the right funding, and then you have, um, you're doing your right finance, your funding and financing and financial management and controls, because as you grow, those are the easiest way to lose money. So you make sure that as you grow, you make sure that you, your processes are able to create um, and catch sufficient risk that uh, that is facing the business. Then, some of the key uh, network supporting startups. Uh, I think there are a couple of them whereby you can actually join. And as you join, and, I, and I'll just talk about this, the, the Semi Founders Association, because there you can be able to get people with the same skills, the skills that you'd be looking for, and uh, you'll be able to get support for that. Then uh, preparedness needed before starting a business. In terms of the preparedness uh, required for starting a business, yes, you have to make sure that you have capital, you have set outside the capital, and you have the mental preparedness to do that. It's, going to, it's, it's not going to be a sprint is going to be a marathon. Things will work today, things will not work tomorrow, but you have to be able to show up. So I think for me, if there is anything that I can tell someone who is ready to start a business, it's the mental preparedness that they need uh, because things might not work out, but they will work out eventually. Then 
I would like to start a business, but I have limited capital. Again, when it comes to capital, really start with what you have as you learn the loops before you get that particular capital into the business, because as you get that particular capital into the business and it comes with its own challenges, uh, how do you deal with human resource recruitment when starting out? I think people's, pe people are the largest resource and the largest headache for most uh, of the startups. So for me, the thing is knowing what the right people, the people to put into their business and what you can outsource is important. And if you're outsourcing, how are you outsource, uh, who, to who are you outsourcing this to? And what is the accountability framework that you put in place? So um, again, joining networks is important because you'll be able to be pointed out to the right people where you do not have to pay a lot of maybe money. For, let's say for example, you need to do your compliance issues, maybe, it doesn't make sense maybe to have the person in house so you can actually get a third party to do that for you. So thanks uh, for joining. I think in, in case there are any other questions, we shall follow, we shall get those through the emails and we shall be able to answer that. Remember this whole, uh, this month we are talking about businesses and uh, how to make sure that you're running businesses that outlive you or businesses that are scalable. So uh, the whole of this month, we shall have people really talk to, about, uh, to us about what are the key pillars. All the conversation will be really based on the five key pillars that you need to run a successful business. Again, feel free to reach out to us at any point in time. Also remember our book is out for sale and it is all about anchoring your financial freedom. It is called Try. Just write to us and you shall be able to deliver the book. Some of the books are on the, uh, some of the bookshops, especially in town. So we can always be able to get a copy there. So thank you so much and uh, have a blessed evening.